Art of the Kickstart, Episode 9. Welcome to the Art of the Kickstart.com, where entrepreneurs are constantly pushing the envelope to build businesses of greatness. Inventors are innovating and creating the products of the future, and backers stand strong for what they believe. These are some of the great thinkers, inventors, and leaders of our time. Here are their stories. Hey guys, welcome to Art of the Kickstart. Today I'm extremely excited to give a big warm welcome to Daniel Fujikake, all the way from Hawaii. He's here sharing his story of SnapZoom, the product that's taken your smartphone and making it amazing. So thanks so much for coming today, Daniel. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And before we get into SnapZooms, what you guys are doing with the business, can you kick us off with a success quote, something that you try to live by? Oh gosh, um, you know, just believe that you can make it happen and, uh, you know, strive for it, go for it. I like that raw. And it's just really what we're all doing. We're just, you don't really have much else. So give us a little bit of background on you guys on you and Mac who actually started the business. What were you guys doing before Kickstarter? Well, Mac and, and I, at the time we're brothers in laws we're, we're, we're buddies too. And we we were hanging out quite a bit and Mac at the time was learning to surf he he had grown up in Honolulu his whole life, but he hadn't really had uh, time. He's he always been a pretty focused guy, so he hadn't really had time to 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 <laughs> play around so much in the water. But uh, he was trying to learn how to surf, and you know that's kind of was the beginning of of the of the product was you know wanted to help him learn how to surf by watching himself, you know, watching videos of himself, you know, surfing. It's 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 very helpful actually to see how your body looks. You know, you're so concentrated on just catching the wave that you don't really understand necessarily how your, you know, the body mechanics are affecting, you know, whether you're making the wave or not. But so, so that's basically it. I, I was a stay at home dad, actually. I've, I've been lucky enough, you know, stay at home with my kids. I have, I have uh, twins. So um, at the time I was just really kind of, uh, you know, concentrated on them. But uh, every once in a while I get a chance to get in the water. And, and so I, I've, I've also loved photography for a long time. And, and those things kind of came together day when we were kind of, um, you know, trying to help Mac learn about his surfing a little bit and um, put the uh, put my iPhone on on the binoculars and uh, actually got some pretty good images off of it. So, you know, we kind of figured we were onto something and kind of pursued it from there. That's so cool. You take basically your heritage, Hawaii, surfing, photography, the things that you love, the things that are what you and who you are. And you build a business around just solving a problem, something to help your friend learn how to surf. What'd you do once you realized, holy crap, this might actually work? How'd you start actually creating a product, something that people could use? Well, uh, you know, initially we were so surprised that it that it uh, worked that we, you know, we couldn't couldn't believe it. And you know, Mac at the time he didn't even have a smartphone. He had he had like a flip phone. So we we both, you know, were just kind of like our minds were were kind of you know we, we were shocked that it that it you could even do it so basically what we did was we just tried to make an adapter that we could use for ourselves and um so we you know we went to our my garage i have i have some power tools and stuff we started hacking up you know any anything we could just to kind of get something that could reproduce the settings and, and everything and once we kind of went through a couple of iterations, we, you know, we, we decided, you know, this is, this is actually something that might be a potential business. And, um, we really started to focus on, you know, the, the biggest problem that we saw was that, you know, the phones are changing every year and we were just at the cusp of the iPhone 4S going into the five. So, you know, we're racing to, um, make this product you know, and then realize that, oh, you know, it would be obsolete because the phone, you know, one of the major phones on the market was going to change and, and, and all of the products that we had, you know, all, all the, you know, the designs that we had were for that specific phone. So from a pretty, from a pretty early standpoint, we decided to try to solve the problem of, of having something that was universal because we wanted, we wanted, you know, specifically it would frustrated us to have you know, to always upgrade our, all the, all the accessories that we bought for our phones, you know, every time, every year that we, we got a new, or every two years we got a new phone. So 
that was something that we really focused on and, and it really worked out for us. It's been wonderful. So you're building something and it's terrifying when you're building it. You're putting basically everything you have on the line to try to create something awesome and you need to show it to people. You need to see what they think. But at the same time, you're like doubtful and fearful of yourself. Is this good enough? Is this the best I can do? When do you start showing it to customers and getting feedback? Well, actually, that was a really big problem for us because we we were so worried that we, we were basically too worried about our design. And um, we, we didn't really show it to anybody. We, we really missed out, I think, on a lot of help because we just really tried to keep it under wraps until we were finished with our ip you know we were writing simultaneously in designing and writing our patent application and i really wish at the time that we had talked to more people i think it would have gone a lot faster you know and they could have helped us you know kind of understand some of the things that we did wrong initially and and just give us feedback you know we kind of um because it was just mac and i bouncing ideas off each other you know, we, we kind of designed it around, it, it was more utilitarian than, than it wasn't sexy. It wasn't sexy. Exactly. So once we, once we start talking to people, they said, Hey, this is bad. You know, you should try this, change this, change that. And, and ultimately, you know, it stayed pretty much close to what we had originally designed, but you know, we did take people's feedback into consideration and it actually made it a much better product. How do you deal with that feedback? Some of it hurts. Sure, assuredly, people are telling you it's not good. You know what you have is a cool idea, and you have to take their stuff into consideration, but at the same time, keep moving forward. How do you deal with that? You know, I think we took everything that people said really, really constructively. We we really tried to listen to them and, and have them, you know, we kind of understand where they're coming from. Uh, you know, almost everybody was pretty supportive, and I think, you know, even though our designs um, were pretty rough and, and, and our prototypes were, were pretty bad, I think the results really spoke for themselves. So, you know, ultimately people were pretty supportive of it. You know, it, it was definitely something that once we had committed so much money to, you know, the designing and, and the prototyping and the, you know, the 3D printed models and, you know, even even getting the molds made for production, I think, you know, we... Like you said, it was a little bit hard to have people say, you know, oh, you should have done this differently. But ultimately, you know, I think we made a product that that really did work pretty well for us. So you realize you've got this idea and you decide to go about patenting it. Would you recommend that for inventors that are creating something new and innovative? You know, it's been kind of such a mixed thing. I mean, we, we are we got our claims allowed, so we, we are going to get our patent and it seems like the distributors that we are working with in, in other countries definitely want you to have some kind of IP, but I don't necessarily know if everybody should go through it just because of the expense. It was such a huge expense for us. You know, obviously if it's something, you know, amazing that, uh, you know, potentially could, I don't know, it's every, everybody has to kind of look at it from their own standpoint. I mean, it's, it's you know, depends on how, how long of a life your product has or the potential, you know, for other people to, to rip it off or, or to, to, to change it. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a really case by case thing, but for ourselves, you know, I'm not in looking at it now, I'm glad we did it, but it was, it was extremely expensive. So you guys raised close to six figures on your Kickstarter campaign, but a lot of the expenses you're talking about now, the patents, the molds, I'm guessing those came before that. How did you go about funding this initially when you were bootstrapped? Well, luckily my my myself and, and Mac had a little bit of savings and we were able to focus that into the creating this product and, and um, without Mac, you know, without each other, you know, we probably couldn't have made it happen, but it got it got pretty it got very expensive very fast working with a designer getting you know 3d printouts made getting you know custom materials made working with people that are designing the 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 molding and and everything it just it's it started to get really expensive so but we were lucky that you know we did get as much money as we did because actually if if we didn't get that much money we really <laughs> we probably could have made it but it wouldn't have been nearly as good of a product as it ended up being. And even though we did a manufacturing study and we did all of these things that we thought prepared us for our goal for Kickstarter, 
we still ended up having to put a ton more money in just you know for the shipping ship outs i mean it was it was a it was a pretty surprising thing you know when you when you when you, you you don't you don't necessarily you're not able to foresee all of those problems that are that come up but but uh they can be quite expensive that's one of the things a lot of times when you're putting up a kickstarter you're working really hard on what goes into it but a lot of times you forget what comes afterwards what are some of the challenges you guys had once the money came through well once the money came through um, and we got very lucky where we were we have a friend a, a local friend who was able to kind of help us with the manufacturing process he he has been doing work with some partners in in overseas you know who who do who did who ended up doing our manufacturing and um they you know when you when it, whenever you're having something made you know and you're going to a factory basically they don't they want you to have everything finished they want you to have everything exactly the way you want it they're not developers they don't want to they don't want to work with you on the product they want to basically make an exact copy of what you've given them and so that was kind of a big problem for us because we hadn't fully completed the design work just because we didn't have anybody locally that's one of the problems of living in hawaii is you know we don't have all these manufacturers here or or the capability here so everything is done from the mainland or or whatever so our product our design was was adequate but not good for uh they had to they did redo the design basically to have it be molded they had to put in these draft angles and they had to do all these cutouts because the there was just too much material there and it wouldn't it wouldn't um, solidify properly it would have all these dimples and and problems with it so all those things we we didn't foresee and that ended up taking the project from a uh, initial delivery date of you know 6 months to you know way past that. i mean it well it was only it was actually uh was it, it was uh may and then it was we were supposed to deliver by september that year but it ended up being <laughs> actually uh um april <laughs> I, oh, well wow. no actually Febu- february of the next year we 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 ended up delivering so it took it way past that but you know Overall I think the Kickstarter community, you know, our backers in particular were very very understanding. We tried to keep in contact with them as much as possible. We tried to keep them updated and overall, I mean, everybody was very very positive. Some some people were upset of course naturally and I understand that as a backer myself I understand when projects you know when you when you have this expectation but I think overall everybody was was pretty was pretty understanding and then ultimately when they did get the product they were they were very happy so we're thankful for that. Yeah, it's an awesome product. Why did you guys choose Kickstarter? Why did you go crowdfunding to get this kicked off? Well, Kickstarter uh it's interesting you know we actually got our big break by entering a contest through a web web blog called uh N Gadget. They had a they had a um Oh wow, you run N Gadget? Yeah, we're on Gadget N Gadget. They had a they had a It's like a tech conference. Their first tech conference is called what was it called? Gosh, I forget the name of it. Anyway, um they had a tech conference in San Francisco and they had a contest out for anybody who was looking to develop a project, a product and have it crowdfunded but hadn't started their project yet. And um they were kind of going to like break the news of these of these projects. So, it's called Xpan, pardon me. So, we entered the contest. We made a we made a quick video. I mean, I basically got it in like on the last day of the of the you know the 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 time frame that you could you could have it in there by and uh made quick made this quick video and had made a couple of prototypes that we spray painted and just kind of like hacked together if you look at our original video you know one of them is it's all broken to pieces i mean we, you know through our testing and whatever these those 3d model uh printouts were so fragile that we would just constantly be breaking them and gluing back them back together but anyway you know they were impressed enough to um grant us a spot in the contest then we made it on uh, we went to uh, San Francisco and we competed and we made it to the finals and you know we got a lot of media attention for that and and it was amazing it really was incredible so so once we started on Kickstarter i mean once we you know once we were there we got so much attention and so many people 
were saying, you know, you should do, you know, we, we already had the intention of doing crowdfunding, but we met with the people from Indiegogo and we met with the people from Kickstarter and, and, and we ended up going with Kickstarter just because of the sheer amount of, of people that, that visit that site every day. It's just, it's just overwhelming. So it's, that's, that's really why we went with Kickstarter. So you're riding this post Kickstarter success wave. You funded almost double what your goals were for the project. What happens next? How have you guys transitioned from the crowdfunding phase to actually going into e-commerce, building the business? Where are you guys at today? Well, that was another that was another struggle, and we're still kind of in the midst of it. We, you know, we we really pushed our manufacturers almost to the breaking point to get our Kickstarter backer rewards out. They they weren't happy, like I said, because we hadn't given them like an absolutely totally finished product, you know, to start with. We you know we had a lot of back and forth about you know making ch- slight changes to the design, but we, you know we kept pressuring them to you know fulfill fulfill uh, at least our obligation to our Kickstarter backers, and you know they they weren't necessarily happy with with being pushed the way that we did and, and not being satisfied so much with the, with the product that, that they were making for us. You know, we honestly, the, the difference between what we showed in our Kickstarter project at, to the final product is it's night and day. I mean, they, they really did an amazing job for us. It's, it's a, it's a much better product and they actually exceeded our expectations, but, but it was also because we, we kept really demanding them to, to make it better and to make it, you know, work better and look better and, and, and be finer and, and have all these aspects that, that we, we thought were important. But anyway, we really pushed them hard to get the, 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 the initial order out so we could fulfill our, our backers' rewards. But we also had an, uh, an additional order placed because it was the minimum order that we could, we could place. And so basically, once we fulfilled all of our orders in, in April, essentially, you know, we, we, we've had another, I don't know, 800, 900 sales, but we haven't had more product. We've been sold out actually for the last two months. So only recently have we finally begun to get our, our reorder in. And so now we really have to do a big push to get, get the product into different stores and, and selling it online. And that's why we're looking for distributors and we're looking for, you know, different people, uh, you know, di- brick and mortar stores. We've had a huge response from, uh, you know, like the telescope enthusiasts and a lot of the optics companies are really excited about our product because it helps them sell their product better. It's, it's, it's going well, but we, we have a lot of work to do. I think it's awesome because you're basically turning a smartphone into a DSLR, but that's, I mean, that's really what you guys are doing. It's something cool. What was your minimum order? You're saying that your Kickstarter campaign didn't fill the minimum order? No, well, I mean, a lot of these factories, they want you to, to put out, you know, get a quite a big order in just to make it worth it for them to do that. The manufacturers that we worked with, they wanted us to put in a $100,000, I mean, 100,000 piece order, which was, wow. you know, I mean, that's, yeah, it's, it's huge money. That's kind of the scale that they're used to working with. And uh, only because our friend you know, was helping us negotiate somebody that he, you know, somebody, somebody that they had done business with for, you know, the last, I don't know, 15 years or so, we were able to negotiate that down quite a bit and make it reasonable. So, you know, once we fulfilled our Kickstarter order, you know, we have, we have another seven or 8,000 pieces that have come in. So we were, we were lucky in that we could get it down so substantially, but that's another problem that you have to look at when you're working with these manufacturers is that, you know, you just, they're used to a totally different scale than, than what you're used to, you know, as a, as a, as a single product entity, you know, it's just, it's not, it's not an easy transition to make sometimes. So yeah, you're a startup. I've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs and they say, try to get a, try to get a factory about the same size as you. Cause otherwise it's just going to be, it's going to be a pain. Yeah. And it kind of sounds like that. Yeah. But I mean, ultimately it, it, it worked out and, um, I mean, it's nothing is ever, you know, easy, but, uh, so far it's been really great. That's awesome to hear. And now I want to jump into the launch round. Sound good, Daniel. Sure. Guys, thanks for listening to art of the kickstart.com. I wanted to let you guys know a special offer I've got worked out with audible.com. If you guys go to 
artofthekickstart.com slash audible, you can get a free audiobook, a one-month download to listen to whatever you want. From Think and Grow Rich and The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, two books that I've recently read, to hundreds of thousands of others. Audible has everything that you guys need. It's just like a podcast. You can find amazing books that our guests are recommending. Check them out. It's a great way to learn. Again, artofthekickstart.com slash audible. Thanks, guys. Welcome to the launch round, where we take our guests through a series of rapid-fire questions geared towards unlocking the inner inventor and entrepreneur in all of us. Get ready to blast off and unlock your inner potential. Let's do this. So, Daniel, what does it mean to be an inventor? Well, I think it really means to be somebody that has an idea that, you know, you're really passionate about and, you know, you think can really benefit people or, or, or even yourself. You know, I, I always look for things to make my life a little bit easier and uh, or that would benefit, you know, my friends or my family. And if it resonates then it, sometimes it's you know worth pursuing. This just happened to be you know Snapsim just happened to be that product for us, and um, I, I'm really glad that that we we went into you know being inventors and, and and entrepreneurs. It's so cool to be able to call yourself an inventor. I want to get there one day. What would you say are the most impressive Kickstarter campaigns you've ever seen? Well, you know some of the most impressive Kickstarter campaigns that I've seen have been ones that are the simplest idea. That, that somebody just really figured out something that really resonated with everybody, a problem that that everybody has. I mean, I've, I've backed a whole bunch. I've backed 20 some odd uh, campaigns and, and, you know, some of them have been electronics and some of them have been, you know, just personal things or just projects that people are doing locally. But, you know, there's one in mind that, that I'm seeing right now that I'm fascinated by. It's, it's a cooler called The Coolest. And uh, oh, it's yes. such a it's such a great idea, and it's such a simple idea, you know that that of course it's 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 going bananas, you know it's it's going so well. So those are the kind of things that I, I'm 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 kind of excited about by you know as a simple solution to a problem that it gets people excited to you know to 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 not only support but be a part of and and you know in the future own um, something that makes their life you know a little bit easier, a little bit more fun. I love that one. I'm so glad you brought it up. And my next question for you, what's the biggest challenge you've had in business or life? Something you've had to struggle through that's made you a stronger person? Well, a couple of years ago, my family's business who who had been they had been in business for about 30 years. They had retail stores here in Honolulu. Their business uh, basically imploded. Just they couldn't keep up uh, with the times and they didn't really they weren't nimble enough and and so that was a big lesson you know, for me, I was working with them at this time. I was pretty invested in the company and um, it just made me really realize that you can't kind of rest on your laurels. You have to really be active. You always have to be kind of looking at, you know, what's out there, trying to anticipate problems or, or things that are going to come up and, and, and try to, you know, position yourself so you're able to weather those, you know, hard times, but also take advantage of the good times. Real world learning like that is so important. And speaking of learning, have there been any books, business or otherwise, that really impacted your life? Maybe three influential ones. You know, it's really interesting. Uh, I, I've I read I read a, a book about inventing, but it it didn't really seem to really pertain to the experience that we went through. I mean, most of the most of the of the things that I've really learned a lot from have just been like blog posts about Kickstarter and, and about inventions and, and, you know, talking to people about IP and, 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 and things like that. It hasn't really been so much of a book experience. I mean, there's so much information out there on the internet now, now that, now that Kickstarter is such a phenomenon and now that being an entrepreneur is kind of a cool thing to do. So, I mean, I really think that if, if you, if you have, you know, just even the smallest amount of, of, ability to, to search things on the internet, that's where you're going to find the most information and look at forums, you know, look at, you know, blog posts about, you know, Kickstarter, listen to your podcasts. I mean, all, all of that information is so valuable and, you know, really just continue to have the, 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 the idea that you can do it. You know, you can't, you're not, you're not limited. You know, every, a lot of people thought that we were crazy and, and then, 
now when we actually made it happen, you know, people are, are pretty excited about the product, you know. So it's um it's something that you just have to kind of believe in yourself and and you know it's all out there on the internet. You you really you really can find so much information. Um, not necessarily something that I found in books, but but just by looking, you know, at, at things pertaining to to Kickstarter and, and inventing. I love that information. It's such a superpower. And if you could have any superpower, what would it be, and why? Gosh, I'd love to have the con- control over the ocean, so I could uh, I could uh, basically always have perfect waves. Yeah. So Hawaiian, so amazing. And and as a kid, what did you want to grow up to be? You know, I, I don't remember one thing in particular that I wanted to be, but I do remember as a kid that I was really never happy with any of my toys. I would always like hack them up or I'd, you know, glue extra pieces onto them or cut stuff up and, you know, glue it on. I always remember doing that hacking stuff together my whole life. So I really think that kind of made me feel like I was able to do, you know, what we did here you know it's it's amazing what you can create in your own garage it's amazing what you can do with your own hands it's not going to look perfect it's not going to look like a finished product but you can it's you know i mean go to the hardware store and get a bunch of pipes and cut them up and glue them together and and it's pretty amazing what you can come up with you know so um that's that's definitely one thing that i i maybe i always wanted to be inventor who knows so that's going to end the launch round, our little look into you, your life, and what it means to be an inventor. Two last questions for you. First, if you had to go back, if you were going to do a new Kickstarter campaign, or if you were just redoing Snap Zooms, what would you do differently? What kind of changes would you make? Well, you know, I'm I'm 41 years old, so I'm, I'm on the older side, I guess, for the people that are doing Kickstarter projects. And um, I really think the most important thing that I could tell anybody to do is really try to understand social media as best you can really focus on social media because it doesn't it doesn't matter how amazing your project is if nobody knows about it and it's not easy to share or it's not easy to get the word out you're stuck you're not going to get anywhere so social media is like a huge huge thing and uh, I did you know take a crash course in it I, I we actually hired uh, somebody locally who ha- could help us manage it because we had our hands so full with just basically trying to respond to the Kickstarter, you know, questions and um, just kind of keep the updates going. And, and, you know, it was, we were traveling, we went to TechCrunch disrupt in the middle of it and, you know, we, to show it off. And we did, we did so many things trying to just promote it in the middle of the campaign the end of the day the last thing I, I i had time to do was to to you know post stuff on on facebook or or twitter but it's so important so last question daniel you've been an awesome guest you've accomplished more than most kickstarters will ever do if you had one piece of advice for inventors people trying to create something amazing what would it be i think the most important thing to think about when you're creating something is to, to try to keep it as simple as possible. I, I know there's some people out there and, and some other inventors that I've talked to in the past have basically come to me with, you know, ideas or wanted me to give them their feedback. And, and some of the ideas are, are absolutely amazing. But I think that the, the, the user base of that product is kind of small. You know, if they can, if they can kind of hone in on something that um, like the coolest you know, that's like a, you know, universal problem or, you know, something that, that has this mass appeal, but is incredibly simple at the same time. You know, I think, um, I think they're going to have a huge success. Thanks, Daniel. That's awesome. And you've been such a great guest. I want to give you a chance, pitch your product, pitch SnapZoom. Where can people come find you, find out about what you guys are doing, transforming phones into the cameras of the future? Yeah, thank you. Um, well, we have, SnapZoom available at our website, SnapZooms with an S dot com. And uh, basically, SnapZoom is a, uh, it's a universal digiscoping adapter. If you're not familiar with digiscoping, it's basically using a camera through a, a regular optic scope to, to turn the, the optics into a telephoto lens. And, uh, you know, the great thing about our product is you can, it works with pretty much i mean i haven't found something that it doesn't work on yet uh, no phone uh, every almost every phone out there on the market up to a the large like galaxy note size phones you can keep your case on you don't need to download any 
you know, special apps. It works great with your, you know, standard camera app. And uh, basically, it just gives you another way to really enhance the, the pictures that you're taking with your phone. And everybody always has their phones on them. And it just it just gives you another aspect of, uh, you know, making incredible pictures, basically. Yeah, you don't have to spend 600 bucks on a DSLR. You get Daniel's product. You put it on your phone. You can turn it into pretty much anything. Microscopes, pictures of the stars. Your video is amazing. You guys have a great product. And thanks for coming on today, Daniel. You've been a really cool guest. I've learned a ton. I'm sure my audience has. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Art of the Kickstart, where we believe makers, inventors, and entrepreneurs are changing the world and bringing humanity forward into the future. I'm your host, Matt Ward, and it's been a pleasure guiding you through this journey of creation and innovation. I hope you're inspired by this and check out artofthekickstart.com to get more information and tactics to help you launch your own business, product, and dreams.